Tim, welcome to Watchbox Studios and thank you for logging on. This is Watches Tonight. This evening, we discuss the Patek Philippe watches to buy in 2022. These are my personal favorites. We chat live and I share your viewer wrist chats right here tonight on Watches Tonight. So, remember, check out the redesigned homepage of thewatchbox.com to see who pays for these pixels. 3,000 pre-owned and vintage luxury watches ready to roll right now. We update several times a day, so if you were there this morning, it's different now. Different window, keep me streaming. Also, check me out on Instagram. Remember, you can always find Tim underscore Masso and my signature 60-second Instagram reviews. Let's see who's in the box right now. Edward Ledden of Sweden, Joseph Zamora, Matt Foster, Joe Pinto from Louisville, Butik One from Poland. We've got Enrique Cassiano, Leo, and Richard Combs from sunny South Florida. Guys, welcome aboard. Let's talk a little bit about some of yours on mine. Viewer wrist shots, number one, starting with Stefano, who dares to be different with his urban Jorgensen 1140 model. It's got a little bit of carry in it, literally and aesthetically. So Dr. T from Pakistan secured this singular JLC Reverso Tribute non-NTM, the 90th anniversary watch, looking good. Bought in Dubai, we've got Tarek H sharing a shot of his white gold H Moser and C Endeavor Center second, also sharp, lovely Fume palladium dial. We've got Brad S of North Carolina who buries the hatchet with his Rolex Daytona and Fernando P who attended last week's Miami Grand Prix with his Rolex Yacht master blue dial in steel and platinum looking good guys send your wrist shots to monday mailbag at the watchbox.com to see your analog on my digital all right who else is in the box now we've got Arto charles from new york city jesse roland john n we got jason c we've got jim m hail bop and Dr. Stu, we've got Ron H. from Sydney, Australia. Ron, I believe you're in today's show. Stay tuned for wrist shots. All right, so I have a wrist shot of my own to add right here. You may have seen my Instagram or Dan Reuter's Instagram, in which case, no surprises. But I have a new watch, and here is the new Tim watch right there. This was actually a custom. Uh, Dan reached out because his family is Ukrainian roots, and he said he wanted to make me a watch after I auctioned off my Zin uh, to benefit Ukrainian refugee relief and you know I said well that's not why I auctioned off the watch I wasn't looking for payment in kind and he said well I'm already making the watch for you no matter what my mind's made up so you're gonna pick the way you want it or I'm gonna guess for you and I said well I don't want to guess watch figuratively or literally so I'm gonna tell you uh, my favorite colors are royal blue and electric green so see what you can do with that and that's exactly what he did so he created a royal blue lacquer dial with electric green lacquered hands they actually mixed himself and it was kind of nice because you know blue and yellow makes green so that's actually how he made the lacquer for the hands and then the strap was custom made in Odessa and apparently Odessa is still quiet and so the strap was made there it's alligator on both sides he hooked me up, lifetime warranty, three spare straps, a couple of extra clasps. The watch is the most accurate watch, mechanical watch at least, I have ever owned. It's been a week and it's still running bang on. It hasn't gained a second, it hasn't lost a second. Plus, Artur Akhmev did the engraving on the rotor. It's got my name and the movement's hand finished, which kind of reminds me of how Rajep Rajepi got started. After his Patek Philippe internship, he actually bought ETA movements. He finished them and he adjusted them. He cased them up and he sold those to generate early seed capital to create his brand. And I gotta be honest, this is an absolute gem. I love this thing. This is a forever watch for me. It's not the end of my collecting. Now that I'm done with my one watch thing with the Zin for four years, there will be other watches, but this is the one that will be a permanent entry in the collection. It shall never leave. Jim Millet, loving this Dan Reuter watch. When are you going to do a full review? I'd say probably tomorrow. Uh, it'll be on my Wednesday Watches show just for fun, and then I'll do a standalone review for both Instagram and for YouTube. All right, who's in the box right now? We've got Dave O. We've got Matt S. joining in from London, staying up late in the UK. Okay, 2022 Patek Philippe watches to buy. This is pure editorial, but every time I try to define my favorite watch brand as some sort of independent or offbeat boutique name, I find myself returning to Patek Philippe. Some of my best personal memories from my time in the watch space are tied to Patek. A red carpet treatment at their boutique in Geneva where they took me up to the sixth floor knowing I was an aftermarket guy. They let me try on everything, including the 5208 and the Grandmaster Chime 6300G. Also, hospitality at the New York City Grand Exhibition. 
I, it was a lot of fun to go in there and just be treated like an old friend, even though I was meeting most of those folks for the first time. Plus, private events I've been able to attend on the Gothberg side of our company. So I've got a lot of great memories of Patek and Patek people and Patek watches. Plus, I love both the past and present watches of Patek Philippe more than any other manufacturer. In total, I love De Batoon, don't get me wrong, but you're talking history since 2002. Patek Philippe goes back to 1839. And if asked to name my favorite Patek watches, the list would be endless. So tonight, I'm taking a look at my favorites, including the best of the 2022 model launches. So let's start with easily the most useful watch that Patek launched this year, the 5326G annual calendar travel time. This watch has it all. 41 millimeters, white gold, and just 11 millimeters thick. It looks like the Pilot until you actually compare the two of them side by side. I, I think the comparison comes about because they both have large applique numerals on the dial, but if you look at the dial, the design of the numerals, the font used, the syringe hands, the lug shape, it's really nothing like the Pilot. So this is not a Pilot, but it's just as useful, if not more so. We have a grained dial with a gorgeous Fumé fade. This is new territory for Patek Philippe. And while I don't love Fotina, I'm not sure this is Fotina. I think they're just color keying to the center of the dial. I would also say that it's got tons of looms. This is an all aspect watch. Handsome, versatile, easy to view day or night. And I think a travel time watch by definition should be legible in the low light setting of an overseas flight, which is why I'm glad that there's a lot of loom here. And because this is a Patek travel time watch, you can hide the second time zone underneath the primary hour hand when you don't need it to clean up the dial. There's a Clou de Paris case band and Carrera like lugs, both of which are bold statements for Patek. You wouldn't expect them on a watch like this. And then we have a movement with micro rotor that gives you a dual time capability, a moon phase and an annual calendar, which if we remember back in 1996 was Patek's original innovation. I also like the architecture of this movement as you have these lovely finger style bridges from the great wheel all the way down to the escapement. Very sharp, not just the finish, but the layout. Now, I would say other than the 5990, the Nautilus Travel Time Flyback Chronograph, this is probably the most capable watch in the Patek Philippe lineup. I also have to say that at $76,880, it's crazy expensive by the standards of the world we live in, but by the standards of a Patek Philippe multi-complication, especially given that people have been paying twice that for steel 5711s, I think this is actually pretty fair. Could they have charged hundred grand for this and sold every one? Yes, I think they could. So on top of everything else, assuming you can get in line at a dealer, the price is right. That said, Patek still needs to work on its warranty. Two years is not enough. Okay, we've got Philip B. from Austria joining in from continental Europe, staying up late with us. Norm M. saying 5134G travel time Calatrava Roman numerals in white gold. That is his ultimate watch. We've got Mihail M. joining in from Romania, another friend from Central and Eastern Europe joining in, and we've got C. Flynn from sunny San Diego and Spencer Chapman from Houston, Texas, or Houston, Texas. I'm not sure how the locals call it right there. We got Detroit Spartan saying, love that Patek. And then right here, Miroslav kindly saying, if anyone deserves a custom watch, it's our watch wizard. Well, I'll be honest, this watch was a gift from Dan, and it is a watch I will cherish for the rest of my life. In terms of where I spend my next watch money, not so sure, but this episode might be a very strong hint. By the way, Dan gave me a lifetime warranty on this watch, wrote it down in ink and everything. All right, jumping back, let's talk a little bit about another great launch from this year that's admittedly a variation on a theme, but an inspired one. Okay, no one is surprised that the new 5270P-014 has a green dial. In 2022, that's just not a shock. It's kind of the thing, and for good measure, it is a few may fade. But the dial detail is outstanding, and as with all dials, the closer you get, the more impressive it is. Look at the polished frames for the day and the month. 
Look at the faceting of the Dauphine style hour and minute hands. Look at the precision of the printing of all the scales and the micro faceting of the white gold indices. This is a dial done right. And when the salmon dial model looks exactly like a Breitling, a green dial 5270 might have been the right direction for this year regardless of prevailing style trends. So the heart stopping caliber 29535 Petit Second easily matches the best including Longa's best. We've got golden wheels, we've got silver bridges, we've got violet pivot jewels and note you can see that all the steel parts are either black polished and satinated and all of the brass parts are either engine turned or Cote de Genève. It is a gorgeous movement. There's a lot to love here, right down to the sharp exterior points where bevels meet on the clutch, which you'll note is fully jeweled. It has instantaneous jumping minutes. It has hacking seconds, column wheel, lateral clutch, overcoil hairspring, fully adjusted as good as it gets. 41 millimeters platinum and substantial. This watch feels large on the wrist, but it feels like you're getting what you pay for. And I have to admit, 211,720 US dollars is a lot of money. But the perpetual calendar chronograph is the heart and soul of Patek Philippe. From the first regular production that is series built, perpetual calendar chronograph of 1941, through the latest 5270p with green dial, this is, I would argue, more integral to the identity of Patek as a company than even the Nautilus, because the Nautilus has only been with us since 1976, and the perpetual calendar chronograph, especially when no one else was making anything like it, really defined Patek, both in terms of its capability and its ambition, and this is the heir to that throne. Jumping back into the chat box here, we've got Watching Watches saying hi, hello Watching Watches and welcome. We've got Soterios P joining in from Greece, another fellow staying up late. And we've got TZ joining in from Geneva, the home of Patek Philippe. Caliber YQG saying wow, we've been hacking seconds. If you've noted, Patek has been feeding that into all of their new movements very slowly. Since we got the 5959 back in 2005, we've seen the new, re newly released, at least, Patek movements include hacking seconds. And we got Stagecoach 420 saying that is a dream Patek. All right, CQ the watch guy, our good friend in Dubai, Sequan. Good to see you, my man. All right, we've got Another one here, and this one is very different. It's obviously a variation on the 5370, but technically speaking, it's so much more. And it is the Patek Philippe 5470P. This is the one tenth of a second mono pusher chronograph. Okay, don't think of it as an upgraded 5370P because it's nothing like that. Uh, it is not a split seconds chronograph, even though it does have two chronograph seconds hands. We're going to explain that in a moment. The watch remains 41 millimeters in platinum, but it's now a foudreon rather than a split seconds or retropon. The timepiece has at center two coaxial chronograph hands. The red one makes a circuit of the dial every 12 seconds, and the white gold chronograph seconds hand. That is actually your 60 second hand. So one is the flying seconds that allows you to read to one tenth of a second and the other is the conventional chronograph seconds hand. Now we've got a lovely combination of colors here and those awesome applique white gold brigade numerals and note it is loomed. So this is a practical watch but remember this is a lot like the zenith striking tenth. So if you want a visual of how this operates think of the zenith striking tenth. Plus like in El Primero this watch watch operates at 36,000 vibrations per hour. The caliber is based on the 29,535 we just saw, but it incorporates all of the advanced research technologies from the 2000s. So take a look. From left to right, you have the Pulsamax silicon escape wheel and silicon pallet lever. You have the Spiromax anti-magnetic silicon hairspring, and you have the rarely seen Gyromax SI free sprung silicon and gold balance wheel. All of those together give you the advanced research technologies. Now, if you look to the left of the first red arrow, uh, you can see that there's actually a preloaded anti-backlash system, a spring-based anti-backlash, anti-jump system, inside of the driving wheel that operates the chronograph clutch. Plus, we now have the five-spoked 
quasi-octopus driving wheel from some of the higher complications. This is a gorgeous movement, and it's as good as it gets. Everything you get on the 29.535 Petite Secon, plus the anti-backlash system, plus the crazy new dial side display, plus the advanced research technologies. And a red, white, and blue dial ensures that almost everyone will love the look. These are endearing and timeless colors. Pricing is roughly 380,000 US dollars, but as with most watches from the brand, you truly get what you pay for. Okay, we have a Mick in Florida joining in, Curtis Arndt. Curtis, I believe you're in the show tonight. Adam Crossfire, Jean-Claude Beaver, and we've got Just In Everyday Carrie. Glad I caught live. What's up, guys? Good friends, good chat, live interaction, and Patek Philippe. That is what's up. We have Enrique Cassiano saying, love me a Patek Philippe with an octopus wheel. Such a nice design. More to follow. And what else is going on here? Abdul, our good friend from Germany, a doctorate of mechanical engineering, no less. Okay, wrist shots number two, Ron H. He's in the chat box now. He's on your screen. Captures his Breitling Navitimer Airline Edition TWA and his Volkswagen Tiguan R SUV. We've got Dylan L., a good friend on all my social media, documenting the moment in Madrid, Spain with his Rolex Air King. We've got Craig E. and Pookie the Pug. We love our watches and whiskers. Admiring his Breitling Emergency in full gold bought from Josh at Watchbox. Sean K. impresses with his Armand Biard piece unique from the creator of Sartori Biard watches. Plus, he's an Audi driver. And Eric Ann of North Carolina visits Paris with his IWC Pilots Chronograph Collective C03 edition. Guys, join my team. I'm looking for a multimedia assistant. And by the way, if you have any experience in sales, we're in an expansion mode. We are looking to add sales associates both at our internet headquarters here in Philadelphia and at our boutiques, which we're opening around the world and around the country. So reach out if you wish to Monday Mailbag at thewatchbox.com to let me know if you're interested in being a media assistant, entry level job, admittedly, or part of our sales staff where I'm not gonna lie, you can make deep into six figures if you're good at what you do. Reach out to Monday Mailbag at thewatchbox.com. Okay, Patek Philippe watches to buy in 2022. We just talked about the new for 2022 watches. Now we're gonna talk about pieces that have been in the collection for a little while, but are worth your time and attention because they don't get enough of it. So we're going to start with the 5207G Minute Repeater, Tourbillon, and Perpetual Calendar. Instantaneous Jump Perpetual Calendar. The first version of this watch came out in 2008. It was platinum with a salmon dial. This model you see right here is a white gold 2018 update with a vibrant blue dial in a white gold case. You can see there's a lot to love and again one of those characteristic of Patek dials, the closer you get the more impressive they are. So we have an aperture style calendar, which I really like because it's a day, date, and month, which is sometimes known as the American calendar layout. And it's easier for me to read at a glance an aperture style calendar than the pointer style sub-register calendars that Patek often used in the past and still uses on some of its annual and perpetual calendars. There is engraving on the flanks of the case, and this is a long-running feature of the 5207. It should be mentioned that caliber RTO 27 PSQI flaunts an embarrassment of riches. We just talked about the, the octopus hand. Well, it's not an octopus because it's got only five spokes, but here it's made of solid gold. It's the third wheel of the movement's drivetrain, and it directly drives the tourbillon. It is entirely hand finished, and it takes seven to nine hours just to finish that 14 karat gold multi spoke third wheel. This is as good as it gets. The black polished and skeletonized tourbillon bridge, as you can see right here, is not only black polished like a mirror, but it has a monstrous eight sharp interior bevels plus four sharp exterior points. And the unseen dial side of this movement is impeccable with plenty to love. They even satinate and mirror bevel springs that no one but a watchmaker will ever see. And look at that overlapping perlage. Executed the old fashioned way with a wooden post. This is worth the $800,000 it would take to land one of these new. And I'll mention no names, 
but I once spoke to a person who was a high-ranking officer at a certain Geneva watch brand where one man invents and makes all the watches. And this person was showing me his collection of investment grade watches. And curiously, there were none of the house brand, but the flagship and the one piece he says he plans to never sell was his 5207P. All right, there I said it. Okay, now here's a watch that is overlooked on several levels, because uh, we hardly ever talk about Patek Philippe's golden ellipse family or the ultra boutique rare handcraft watches. Most of the time we talk about relatively mass produced Patek sports watches. Well, we're writing the wrong with the 5738-51G golden ellipse. This watch is absolutely loaded with features, and that in spite of only having two hands and no date. So this dial embodies both grand faux enamel in black, which is hard to do, plus banknote scrolling, hand engraved on a white gold base. You get both right here. And remember what I said about Patek dials becoming more impressive the closer you get? Even the hands, if you look at the hands, black polished at the center and then satin finished deeply grooved like tree bark and rounded across their tops. Take a look, by the way, at the engraving of the dial. The closer you get, the better it looks. So, this watch is only 6.6 .6 millimeters thick. It's actually a little bit less than that, and powered by a 240 micro rotor automatic. So, it's 34.5 millimeters wide by 39.5 millimeters end to end in white gold. It doesn't have lugs, so it's a lugless watch. $74,520 buys this work of art. And again, I cannot overemphasize people are paying way more than twice that just to get the steel Nautilus used. This is the kind of thing Patek has to offer that no one talks about. Even Patek does not do a great job of elucidating all the qualities of these ultra boutique, low volume, application only craft art pieces. And even though it's been around since 1968, the golden ellipse, so named because it is a golden ratio form, it just doesn't get a lot of play. We talk Calatrava on a reasonably regular basis, but never golden ellipse. If you own this, rest assured, even at a Patek Club meeting, you're gonna be the only one with that watch. Heck, you could probably walk into the flagship Geneva store with this on your wrist and have the only one in the building. Okay, we've got Frederick Watches, we've got Jamie Opulence, Jim Millet, saying another masterclass from Professor Masso. I am nothing but an interpreter. It's like ZZ Top. They said, look, we didn't create any of these blues forms or tropes or styles or licks. We're just interpreting an art form that we deeply appreciate. And that is my role with watches. Until I have a watchmaking certificate, I will just be your humble guide. Okay, what else is going on? We've got Mark, if you could choose between the old Patek Pilot or the new 5326, which would you? Well, considering the old Pilot was a dual time and the new one, or I should say the 5326, is a dual time and an annual calendar with a new micro rotor movement, sign me up for the 5326. I'm all about the new watch. CFZ, Tim, aren't silicon components frowned upon by the biggest watchmakers, e.g. Philippe Dufour? What do you think about that? Well, I would say where you're dealing with like a one-man shop, where it's small enough that the death of the proprietor could conceivably lead to the end of the factory, you do have a problem. When you're talking about a large billion Swiss franc industrial firm like Patek Philippe, I have every confidence it will always be around to resupply those parts, so I'm less worried there. But if you're dealing with some sort of brand where just like one man and three or four other people, or one man alone is making the watch, then I'd be deeply concerned about the future availability of spare parts. It's like if Pano's Automotive down in Georgia, which operates out of an old DOT salt shed, were to go under, your chance of getting those Pano's specific body parts and trim parts would be zero in the future. Uh, whereas if Bill Ford died tomorrow, your chance of getting an ECU for a Mustang GT500 20 years down the line would probably still be pretty good. Okay, what else is going on here? David Greenspun, I love my Patek Philippe 6000G white gold pointer 
factor date, subdial seconds, 240 micro rotor, both simple and complex. And that is one of my favorite Calatravas, by the way. The 5000, the 6000, and the 6006, I adore them, especially since the arrival of the 6000, they've been a little bit automotive inspired, and I really like that. Okay, what else is going on? Regularly scheduled program, 5520p alarm travel time. This watch offers a ton of practical utility. The alarm, I've always said, regardless of price, whether it's an entry-level Seiko or this, it is the most useful complication. And this is the ultimate alarm watch. So it's 42.2 millimeters in diameter in platinum. So it's beefy for a Patek dress watch. It is a clear offshoot of the Calatrava Pilot. Unlike the 5326, this really does look like the Pilot. And Patek calls this 5520p pilot style. We love our dogs here at Watchbox. That's what's going on in the background. Uh, we have two time zones. This watch is loaded with functionality. And as with the 5326, you can hide that extra hour if you don't want it. You've got both a day and night indicator for local and home time, which most travel time watches don't give you. They mostly give you home time. Here you get both. You've got a pointer date. Don't mistake that for some sort of subseconds. That's a date right there. You have a wonderful alarm setting that gives you 24 hour digital programmability in 15 minute increments and you get an on off. So if you want to turn it off and disable the alarm, you can easily do that. Now in 15 minute increments, you can set day or night. So it knows the difference between, for example, 8 a.m and 8 p.m. or 9.30 a.m. and 9.30 p.m. Also, look at the graining on the black of the dial and the white gold numerals, absolutely gorgeous. <coughs> I'm a little bit parched here. I always go over and above for you guys. I wear myself out. So a minute repeating system is used on the reverse side. A minute repeater governor, let's take a look at this reverse of the watch. You have a minute repeater centrifugal governor under the golden Calatrava cross. So it has a nice, lazy cadence to it. It doesn't ring or rattle like a Memovox or a Volcane Cricket. You have a set of annular gongs, so those ring gongs that you get on a minute repeater, and then you have black polished strikers exactly as you would find on a repeater. Note that the strikers are both black polished on their tops and micro beveled on their edge. It sounds like a minute repeater, and it's got a 55 hour power reserve, hacking seconds, tons of technical refinement over 500 pieces in this movement and the front side of the movement is packed with finely finished micro machinery. On the dial side, it's just as complex and minutely detailed as on the reverse side. You have star wheels, you have alarm indicators, you have day-night indicators, you have gold, you have violet, you have silver, you have blue. It's the best of everything and again, only your watchmaker will ever see it and then the loom is outstanding. This is a 24 hour watch with a 24 hour alarm and it has a dial to match. At $272,040, dollars this is worth the money. This is a ridiculous amount of money and I can't honestly say that any formulation of life priorities places this at the top without a little bit of guilt. But then again, that's why we call these guilty pleasures. It's everything you love about a Patek Minute Repeater a Calatrava Pilot Travel Time and a JLC Memovox. And remember, Terry Stern personally listens to every chiming watch that leaves the factory, including this new alarm. All right, let's see what's going on in the box. Chris G saying, I have a scratch on my brand new Rolex dial. Do you recommend I send it to Rolex for service? Yes, that's unacceptable. What else is going on in the box? Enrique Cassiano, knowing Tim, I'd be surprised if it ended up being something other than the Patek 5235G. It may appear later in this show, much less on my wrist. What else is going on? Mark S is in the box. He's a good friend from Brooklyn. We got pocket watch time, stagecoach 420, and Dr. Stu thought the 6102 Celestial Moon Age might make your list. Well, we're not done yet. We're not done. We have here, 
Another favorite, I'm not going to dwell on it because we've talked about it extensively here, but the 5236P, not to be confused with the 5326G, but here we've got 41.3 millimeters with a lovely 3448 inspired case, so the case is drawn from antiquity, and this is a platinum perpetual calendar with inline calendar display, again, day, date, month, American style, launched in 2021, and I deeply regret that it wasn't entered for consideration in the GPHG because I thought this would have been an Aguidor winner. I, I thought this would have been an outright winner, not just a contender, but this would have been the best watch of the year at the Oscars of watchmaking. Now this watch is everything I loved about the 5235, but with better legibility, because it's not a regulator, an arguably more colorful and interesting dial, and a calendar that's more intuitive to the eye. We've also got this lovely satin blue gradient dial. It's not just a fume fade, but it's got this steel-like brushed pattern from top to bottom, and a micro rotor automatic that's admittedly derived from what you get in the 5235, but it's lovely to look at all the same. As I like to say, the watch has both finish and architecture. At 136,020 US dollars, you're going to pay a huge premium over a 5235, but you're also getting a lot of innovation, exclusivity, and possibly the most distinctive perpetual calendar watch on the market from anyone, and that is any brand. All right, viewer is shots number three. Derek F. of Dallas, Texas, rolls with Jaguar and his Rolex date just Jubilee in two tone. I love the embroidery on the cuff, too. The details matter. Norm M gears up for a big day with the Tuxedo and Glasuta Original Panamatic Lunar. Looking good. We got John S. and Stepan Sarpaneva reminding you who is number one in moon phase dials. Jeb B. and his IWC Pilot's Watch Time Zoner Chronograph join us from Reykjavik, Iceland, and that is one of the tallest buildings in both the city and the country. It's a huge cathedral towering over 200 feet, and not speaking Icelandic, I'm not even going to attempt to pronounce its name, but it's a gorgeous place. Finally, Curtis A., who's in our chat box, sent us a wrist shot, but I had to include this photo from his Healy Car Club meeting. Apparently, that magnificent monstrosity is Corvette powered. Send your wrist shots to Monday Mailbag at thewatchbox.com to see your wrist on my list. All right, we got Martin Hansen in the box. Who will win the Giro d'Italia? I'm thinking Richard Carapaz has the experience and the team on his side. So that would be my favorite for now. What else is going on? We've got Time Hill saying, love the micro rotor in the 5236. And we've got Jamie Opulent saying, Reykjavik is stunning. And I've got to agree from the pictures I was sent. Okay, Patek Philippe watches to buy in 2022. Gone, but not forgotten. As I said, the history of the company is infinitely intriguing and engrossing. Whole encyclopedias have been written, and yet they still can't do full justice to the extent and depth of Patek's innovation and artistry. I'm going to talk about watches relatively recently discontinued because others go true vintage better than I do. So let's start with one of my favorites. You know it was common, the 5235G, the white gold regulator. Previewed in 2011, it proved so cumbersome to manufacture that it didn't actually launch in series until 2013. After a year, they had to slow production down again through 2015 because integrating these advanced research silicon technologies proved to be more challenging than first believed. It is a regulator. It has hours, minutes, and seconds on separate sub-registers, a blue-printed, multi-finished satin dial. The name of the company and the city of origin are engraved rather than printed on the dial. Annual calendar. It has that lovely 3448 inspired case design, and at 40.5 millimeters in white gold, it's a nice size. It also had the micro rotor auto that is now filtering out through the entire model line at Patek, but it got its debut in this model. A unique movement at the time, lovely again because of architecture and finish in equal measure, and at $48,000 to $55,000 used, this is a good place to sock $50,000 if you want to enjoy your investment long term. I always find these things more enjoyable and certainly more tangible than stocks and bonds. And heck, this might be a good period to hold hard assets like real estate, gold, watches, cars. All the fun investments are the kinds you want to hold during a recession. Stocks and bonds. All right. The 5016, I have to say possibly the greatest watch I have ever encountered. That one was sitting on the board of my computer back in 2017 alongside my glasses and my channel. And I can't imagine a thing's well, just in combination that I enjoy more. That is a power pairing. What else is going on? Well, this is 36.8 millimeters. 
A powerhouse, a little giant that looked great on my wrist, made from 1992 through 2011, only about 200 were actually made, and I love it so much that I would adore any version of it. I'm not normally a yellow gold or a rose gold guy, unless it's this. Rose gold with a black lacquer dial here and those Breguet Arabic numerals in rose with Breguet hands. On a Patek, absolutely special with a Jean-Pierre Hagman case, as good as it gets, the mechanism was porn. Once again, we've got that solid gold third wheel. We've got the strikers. We've got everything you love about Patek finish. And while there is quite a bit of mechanical finishing on their low, lower level watches, when they're making 200 over decades, the level of time and attention expended on each one of these parts is uncompromising. This is as good as anything from Ferdinand Bertou or Grubel Forsey. And I'll say, that it was briefly the record holder for the most expensive watch, most expensive wristwatch, I should say, ever sold, as back in November 2015, a charity benefit at Only Watch, a 5016 in steel sold for $7.3 million, and at the time, it was the title holder for the most expensive wristwatch ever sold. And keep in mind, this was several years after the 5016 was discontinued. Now, Today, if you want something like that, a 40.2 millimeter 5316 in platinum remains in the catalog. It also has a lovely dial. It's a lot more attractive as both a case and a dial than the interim reference 5216. And I'll say that the enamel dial in black is worth the wait, and you will wait a year. Even if you're approved to buy it, and it is an application piece, it will take one year for them to make it. Time well spent. What does it cost to buy a 5016? Somewhere between 400,000 and a million, depending on whether the piece is relatively more or less common. Now, one more piece from the not so distant past, rolling back the clock to 2017, and roughly this time of year, the Patek Philippe Grand Exhibition in New York City and the 5522A. This was a 42 millimeter stainless steel, 600 piece limited edition for the US market, launched on the occasion of the Grand Exhibition. It was a minimalist Calatrava pilot design, but without a date and without a second time zone. You still got the white gold numerals, you still got the sandpaper like dial and the broad sword hands, but it was a unique application of the 324 center rotor automatic with three hands and no complication, no date even. Cooler and scarcer than a steel Nautilus or Aquanaut, this thing was part of the 2017 Grand Exhibition Series, but the only one that I would really want to wear on my wrist every day. It's a Calatrava Pilot without all of the foff, and at $70,000 to $80,000 right now pre-owned, considering 600 is a pretty big limited edition, prices on these have remained firm, speaking well for its long-term collectability. All right, Adam Crossfire saying $7 million almost seems a steal compared to a turquoise Patek. Yes, it's true, Patek has long since surpassed its own record. Brian Ellsley, am I the only one who struggles with liking Patek? I'm going to the Design Museum in London this week to see the Oak Patek collection and educate myself. Also be sure to check out the Patek Philippe Museum in Geneva. You'll be amazed at how much justice it does to horology in general. For a Patek Philippe sponsored museum, it is not self-serving at all. And it really honors the history of horology generally, not just the brand that pays the bills. Okay, viewer wrist shots number four. Jens F. from Hamburg, Germany, visits Zurich with his Tag Heuer Carrera caliber Heuer 02 in green, looking good. Tobias L. takes his Husky for a run with his Seiko SNR 045J Mega Hole. Saul C. prepares to attend a friend's wedding with his versatile Rolex Milgauss Z Blue. And you know that's a favorite of mine. David F. and his Porsche 981 GT4 roll with the IWC Big Pilot's Watch Bronze. And Professor Adrian and daughter take us home with Moonwatch and Swatch. Not to be confused with Moonswatch. Send your chats to Monday Mailbag at thewatchbox.com. Thanks to everyone who joined in. We had a great live chat. And as ever, thanks to Sean on the switcher for making the magic happen. I have a special hat that I will be giving out shortly. So you're going to want to stay tuned so you can win one of these. Time out, Tim out. Thanks for logging on.